الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وصراته وسلامه على افضل خلق الله على سيدنا وحبيبنا رسول الله وعلى اله واصحابه ومن والاه اما بعد فيا عباد الله اوصيكم اوصي نفسي بتقوى الله في السر والعلنيه فان تقوى الله سبحانه وتعالى راس كل خير والله سبحانه وتعالى امر عباده ان يتقوا والله سبحانه وتعالى جعل التقوى مفتاحا للجنه الحمد لله الله سبحانه وتعالى سيز ان القران في بيوت أذن الله أن ترفع ويذكر فيها اسمه يسبح له فيها رجال في يسبح له فيها بالغدو والآصال رجال لا تلهيهم تجارة ولا بيع عن ذكر الله وإقام, وإقام الصلاة وإيتاء الزكاة ولا يخافون ويخافون يوما تتقلب في القلوب والأبصار Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that there are houses that he has permitted to be established wherein his name is mentioned and he is praised and glorified in its in the uh, early part of the day and in the latter part of the day and then it says by men who are not diverted by either commerce or trading buying or selling from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from establishing the prayer from paying the zakat and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he did this liyajziyahum ahsanu ma'amilu in order for him, him to requite them to give them recompense for more than what they did and to increase them from his bounty and then he says subhanahu wa ta'ala that يَرْزُقُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابِ يَرْزُقُ اللَّهُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابِ that Allah provides whomever he pleases without any reckoning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no reckoning like merchants in this world they reckon what something cost the added value, transportation, they look at all those, they, they examine all of these things and then they look at what their reasonable profit is and then they sell it for that and the person buying it also thinks about he might go and look at other places because he, he reckons people in this world, they reckon and why? why do they do that? because they're limited their supplies are limited, their capital is limited the person purchasing knows that he has a limited budget if you go buy a house, the first thing the real estate agent says to you is what price range are you looking for? Because they don't want you to waste their time. Because they know you're limited. But they don't know how much that limit is. Is it 2 million, 5 million, 10 million? There's houses in the Bay Area, 15, 20 million dollars. There's people who can afford those. So everybody has limitations on their bounty, on their wealth but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no limitations so he has permitted houses to be set up where he can be glorified in those houses by night and by day and he does it and tells us that the people that are going to occupy those houses are people that aren't diverted by their tijara and their bay'ah by the worldly concerns of this life, engagement in activities. Now, this group in here, or wherever we are in the Bay Area, there's a number of masajid in the Bay Area. This is a limited number. But if you look at the actual people that are in the masajid, and, and how much they represent, first of all, of the overall community, it's a minute amount of people. Most people right now are working. They're waiting till 5 o'clock. Thank God it's Friday or 4 o'clock. So they can leave their offices and go and do what they do on the weekend to return on Monday. What is their primary activity? Their primary activity is the acquisition of wealth. That's the primary activity of what people are doing out there. 
And humans have to do that because we've created very complicated societies where we need uh, exchange of goods. Nobody can do everything. We're not hunter-gatherers anymore. We have, to, we have situations where we go and we work and we do these things and we help each other. So you need a pair of shoes, but you don't have to go out, hunt the animal, kill the leather, skin it, then tan the leather, and then sew the leather together and make your shoes. When I was in West Africa, it's very easy to make a pair of shoes. It's not hard. They won't be nice Prada shoes or some kind of Italian shoe, but it's not hard to do. You can even, there's, there's homeless people that have cardboard that they just tie onto their feet. There's a, humans can do a lot of things, but we've created complicated societies where we like to dress a certain way, we like to be fashionable, whatever. So all of those things create complication. The more complex a society becomes, the more difficult it becomes for any one person to become independent. No, they're completely dependent on others for our groceries, all these things. We don't farm, we don't do this. This is the ta'awun of human nature. But the majority of people become so obsessed with the acquisition of wealth that they forget the primary purpose of life. Not only do they become so obsessed with the acquisition of wealth, but their obsession wears them out. And because they get worn out, they need recreation. So the weekend in our culture becomes two days or two and a half days of just trying to restore some of their vital energy in order to go back in to the fray of the work week. And then at the end of the day, they're so exhausted every night that they literally go home and completely uh, just drop dead, literally. Or wind down, as they say. Wind down, because they're all wound up, getting tighter and tighter, so they wind down. Wind down usually with things like wine in this culture. That's how they wind down, with wine. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Qur'an that the primary purpose of life is not your commercial activities. The primary purpose of life is not the acquisition of wealth. In fact, we're warned about that in the Qur'an, in many verses. There's people who say, أَهْلَكْتُ مَالَ الْلُمَدَى the person that does it, he's not self-reflective. And he says, I've consumed vast amounts of wealth. He's boasting. I've consumed vast amounts of wealth. There's people who in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الْهَاكُمُ تَكَاثُرُ حَتَّى زُرْتُمُ الْمَقَابَرُ Be vying with one another in the acquisition of goods has you so preoccupied. It has you entertained. In fact, the word lahu really, the root of it is entertain. Entertainment is when you are diverted in something that is not primary. That's entertainment. In Arabic, lahu is to be concerned with something that is not primary to your concern to the detriment of what is primary to your concern. Now, the Prophet said, permitted lahu in homeopathic doses. He permitted lahu for during weddings, Eid festivities, things like that. Every, occasionally lahu is important, recreation. One of the things one of the Sahaba said, sometimes I use batil, things that are meaningless things, in order to, as tajimu, in order to recreate for haq. In order to recreate, in, in other words, to restore my energy for haq. So you can exhaust yourself in haq and batal. But in our society, most people have become so preoccupied with their acquisition of wealth and then with trying to sustain the energy necessary for that complete preoccupation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says both of those things are in reality wastes of time if those are your central activities, if that's why you're doing them. If you're doing the work in order to sustain your batal, or if you're doing your batal in order to sustain your work. So people in our culture are trapped in a vicious cycle. In a vicious cycle. 
they work to play and then they play in order to go back to work. So it's really like the rat spinning and that's why, what do they call it? The rat race. Because rats race on those little spinning things and they're not going anywhere, but they think they're going anywhere. Now if people stop and reflect on this, they have anxiety attacks. So they go to the psychiatrist and he gives them things like um, anxiolytic drugs. That's why there's a massive industry in our culture for people taking drugs to calm them down from their anxiety. So there's all these people out there that are on these drugs, they're driving around. You go to the grocery store and they're smiling and you don't realize that that smile is the result of a drug. I'm not making this up. You, you just read the numbers in, in the drug. The, the, dr everybody's got economic downturn except the people selling anxiolytic drugs. They don't have economic downturns. In fact, they go up when things go down. Because people get more anxiety. They're worried about losing their job. Muslims, if they understand their religion, don't have those same types of anxieties. Why? Because Allah says that man is created in anxiety, a state of hala, hulu'a. Right? إِذَا مَسُّ الْخَيْرُ مَنُوعَ When good comes to him, he starts withholding it. Why does he withhold it? Because of the hala, because of the anxiety. If I don't hold on to this, I'm going to lose it. If I lose it, I won't have any money. If I don't have any money, I won't be able to buy food. If I won't buy food, I'm going to starve to death. If I starve to death, I'm going to die. If I die, I don't exist anymore. That's the way people think in states of anxiety. But Allah says, إِلَّا الْمُصَلِّينَ Except people that are in a state of prayer. Why? Because لَا تُلْهِيهِمْ تِجَارَةٌ وَرَبِعُ الْعَنْدِكِ They're not entertained in their acquisition of wealth from remembering the real reason that they're here, which is to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There was a time in the Muslim world when, when you couldn't go into the suq without having the majority of people either with a subha or reading Qur'an while they were waiting for customers to come in. That was the Muslim world. The Muslim world was filled with people that actually knew that the primary purpose of their existence was to know their Lord. ما خرقت الجن والإنسا إلا ليعبدون ما أريد منهم الرزق وما أريد منهم أن يطعمون I only created humans, jinn and humans, the spirits and the humans. I only created them to know me, to worship me, to adore me. I don't want for provision. I'm providing for them. I don't need their provision. They don't need, like, you see, in, in, in feudal culture, in pre-modern world, and still in corporate feudal culture, because it's a type of feudalism, people just think they're free now, as opposed, in the old days, they knew they were a slave. But now people think they're free, but they're still trapped in feudal systems. In the feudal system, the corporation is like the slave master. The people that come in to the corporation are like the slaves. Now, you, you have to take care of the slaves to a certain degree because you want them to work more. They have, you can go to seminars here that teach you how to make your employees more happy because happier employees have higher productivity. I mean, there's, you can do, so they're not being nice to you because they're nice people necessarily. They'll fire you if they think they can make more money by firing you. But they're nice to you because they know, one, there's going to be less chance of, of suits against them in a litigious society where people sue very easily. But the main reason why people had servants and slaves and these things is to increase their wealth to do things for them. The main reason they want increase of wealth, freedom from anxiety and, and a sense of security. They want a sense of security and they want to be free from anxiety. That's what everybody wants, right? As Ibn Hazm said, the foundation of human existence is tardul ham. It's just trying to get rid of anxiety. That's what everybody's really looking for, is how do we get rid of anxiety. So what they do, these people out here, is they create systems to free them from these anxieties. They still have anxiety because there's no freedom from anxiety by conditions that are anxious creating conditions in the first place. As long as you're in the world, you're in a state of anxiety because the world is uncertainty. 
you have economic upturns, downturns, you have bubbles, the bubbles burst, people lose jobs. There's no nothing, there's no security. When was there security? There's no security right now in this room. Amantum, you know, do you feel secure that Allah can't shake the earth from under you? We're, we're in California. It's one of the biggest fault lines in the world. They've been predicting that this, this state's going to fall into the ocean. We could have a major tsunami. It's not impossible. It happened in Indonesia. There's no security. The only security is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the only way you secure yourself with Allah is Iman. That is why Iman and security are related. Aman is from Iman. Amantu billah can literally mean in Arabic, if you take the, the literal meaning of the word, I made myself secure with God. That can be the amana billah. I made myself secure with God. That is what masajid are about. It's about being in a state of security and preparation for the great day of anxiety. The day of real anxiety where there's no anxiolytic drugs. Nobody gets anxiolytic drugs on the Yom Qiyamah. People are going to be shaking, sweating. They'll be up to their head in sweat. From the anxiety, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran about that. Now what is the name of these buyut? Is masjid. Masjid in Arabic, in the ya'muru masajid Allahi man amana billahi wa yawm al-akhir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that those who do imarat al-ard, those who do imarat al-masajid, that, that, that fill the masajid up, are people that believe in Allah and the last day. They have a sense of understanding of where, whose they belong to and where they're going. Who we belong to, not the corporation, not your employee. That's why if somebody says, I can't go to Jummah, why? Because I'll lose my job. That's where they've set their priorities. They put their priority with their job. That's where their priority is. And that's fine. You made a choice. You made a choice to come to Jummah today. Other people made a choice to stay behind their computer terminal and be working. And, and they're Muslim. And they say, oh, I'm worried. It's a, it's a difficult situation. The employment, the job, I can't... There's people, I guarantee you, that were going to Jummah and now they're not going to Jummah. Because they don't want to put themselves in a situation where maybe their employer will think about firing them before they fire other people. Anxiety about provision, even though provision is guaranteed from the cradle to the grave. Everything that was written for you, you will get. Nothing is going to miss you. The Prophet ﷺ said, لَنْ يَمُوتَ إِبْنُ آدَمْ حَتَّى يَسْتَوْفِيَ رِزْقَهُ فَأَجْمِرُ فِي الطَّرَبْ None of you will die until you completely finish all of your provision, so seek in the best of ways for your provision. Don't steal, don't cheat, don't lose your religion based on dunya. Imam Malik was asked, who are the, the, the biggest losers? And he said, those who lose the next world in pursuit of this world. He said, are there bigger losers than those people? He said, yes. Those who lose the next world because of the material goods of others in this world. So in other words, they're just watching people and wishing they had what they had. They're not even getting what other people have. They're just watching them. Lifestyles of the rich and famous. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that those who establish and occupy the houses of God are people who believe in Allah and the last day and establish the prayer and pay the zakat and don't fear any, anyone but God. They only fear God. They don't fear losing their job. They don't fear uh, this, that, or the other. They don't fear Tom or Dick or Harry. They only fear Allah. Those are the people that establish the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the house, Allah has called us to a house in this world in order to prepare for a house in the next world. You build your house. Man bana li baytan fi dunya. Man bana lillahi baytan fi dunya. Bana Allahu lahu baytan fi jannah. If you build a house for God in this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will build a house for you in the next world. This is a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu What is the masjid? The masjid is the place of sujood. What is sujood? 
It's a state of abject humility before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or before a creature. That's why people used to do sujood. In, in, in the old days when they went into the king, they would go into prostration. There's people that still prostrate to people. Wallahi. And they can do it in other ways than just the physical prostration. Right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when He told Adam, اشجدوا لآدم فسجدوا إلا إبليس فسجدوا إلا إبليس لم يكن من الساجدين إبليس wasn't from the ساجدين why? ما منعك قال ما منعك ألا تشجد إذا أمرتك what's wrong that you don't make sujood when I told you to make sujood قال أنا خير منه I'm better than him خَرَقْتَنِي مِنْ نَارُ وَخَرَقْتُهُ مِنْ طِينَ He's using logic. You created him, me from fire and air, and you created him from mud and water. I'm better than him. Why should I do sujood to him? So what stopped him from doing sujood? Arrogance. Takabbur. Allah said, in fact, get out because there's no room for kibbur in my presence. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? He says, make sajda and draw near to God. You come into the presence of God in sajda because it's total humili- humility before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is humility in, a- in English? Tawadr in Arabic. In English it comes from a Latin word, humus. Humus is earth. Humility is knowing that you are from dust. Humility is knowing your origin. So Allah called people to sujood in this world. Now in the Yawm Qiyamah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Yawm yukshafu an saq, on that day when this momentous affair, when all of humanity is brought before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa yud'awna ira sujood, and they're called to make sajda, fala yastati'oon. They're not able to make sajda. Their eyes are completely in a state of, of downcast and utter terror. They're in a total state of humiliation, not humility. Humiliation, because there's a difference between humility and humiliation. If you do not humble yourself before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will humiliate you before His creation. And they're related. Humility, even in English, they're related. Humility and humiliation. Valil in Arabic means humiliated, but it also means tractable. Like a, 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 a camel that's real is one that's easy to ride. You see, that's why humiliated people are people that you can just do whatever you want with them. Because they have no dignity. They've lost their dignity. On Yom Qiyamah, that's what happens to the arrogant people here. They lose their dignity. What happens to the people of humility here? They're elevated. And they're given izzah and dignity before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the difference. So you choose what you're going to do here. You choose. You decide who you want to be with. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَدْ كَانُوا يُدْعَوْنَ إِلَى السُّجُودِ وَهُمْ سَالِمُونَ They were called to sujood when they were well, when they could do it, when they were salimun. They, they had everything they needed. And Allah said, اُشْجُدُوا Make sajda before me. Five times a day, 34 times, if you just do the fault, you're going to go into a state of sajda before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and draw near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if you ignore that command of coming to the masajid, the place of sujood, that's masjid, is ismu makan in Arabic. It's the place that you do something. It is the place that you make sujood. The place of the masajid are places of humility before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's forgetting about your position in dunya. You might be a big engineer. You, they might call you chief. They might call you uh, high names, wherever you are. They might say, yes sir, no sir. You could be out there. There's people in here that are in those positions. You're the big doctor. That's doctor. What do you think we should do, doctor? The nurse says. You're making the decisions. But when you enter that door, you're nothing. You stand next to the street sweeper. 
You stand next to the homeless. You stand next to the most poor people in the community. That's the masjid. It's a place where nobody knows who's chief and who's not. Because this is the place where Allah knows what's in the hearts. Allah knows what's in your heart. I don't know what's in your heart. I don't know who's arrogant here. I don't know who's filled with their nafs and their ego. I don't know that. Only Allah knows. That's what this place is about. It's about humility. And that's why when you enter that door, you enter with humility. If you think you can come in here and become arrogant, Wallahi Allah will humiliate you. This is the place of humility. This is the place to learn humility. This is the place to cultivate humility in your heart so that you can go out in the world in a state of humility. That's what these places are about. Now I'm just going to end on saying one thing. The Muslims in this country are asleep. There's a deep sleep. It, we could almost say it's, it's a state of a coma. Because the thing about coma, when I, I used to work in a critical care unit, and I had comatose patients, the way we used to test them was put needles in them. You, know, you poke them, and, and you'd see if you get some kind of reaction, because if somebody's in a deep coma, there's no reaction. Right? You check their pupils, pupil, 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 pupil dilation, these things. When, when, when you're in a deep sleep, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throws things into your life to wake you up. If you don't respond to those, they just get worse. They get worse and worse. The best thing that it can happen to Muslims is tribulation. Really. Muslims after 9-11, they suddenly organizing, thinking about where they're going, what they should be doing. And then now things how oh, Obama's in the... Everything's better, no more orange suits, they're going to shut down Guantanamo. You must go back to sleep. See? But there's a benefit in tribulation. But I'll tell you, this is a tribulation. If you don't think this is a tribulation, you don't understand what's going on in this country. We have Muslims all over this country. They're increasing exponentially. We have large families, three to seven children. Muslims aren't like uh, people now that have one child maybe or no children. They still have three to seven children. I have five children. That's happening all over this country. We're not thinking about where we're going institutionally. You can build masjids, you can rent places to pray, but think about this phenomenon. Because this is being replicated all over this country. And if we don't seriously start thinking as a community about where we're going, about what we're really supposed to be doing here. Is this really about just getting the American dream, having your home? Don't get in your Lexus, driving to your work every day, going home, and then maybe Fajr and Isha, if you're a devout, pious person, that's all it is? People think they can say, I believe, and they're not going to be tested. Because if, if, if you think that's what this is about, you're in the wrong religion, and you're on the wrong planet. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم لسائر المسلمين. الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا وحبيبنا رسول الله. إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلم تسليما اللهم صل وسلم مبارك على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحابته ومن تبعهم بإحسان بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم بارك أصحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم بارك في أصحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى رؤوسهم الخلفاء الراشدين المهديين وذر ياته وأزواجه آل بيت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وعلى التابعين وتابعهم بإحسانا إلى يوم الدين الله سبحانه وتعالى أمرنا أن نصلي على رسول الله وأن نكثر من الصلاة عليه في هذا في هذا اليوم المبارك فصلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما وأكثر من صلاته عليه فإن أكثركم صلاة عليا أقرب من يوم القيامة الناس الذين يصلون على رسول الله في 
هذه الدنيا يتقرب إليه بهذه الصراف الآخرة اللهم اغفر لنا واغفر المسلمين والمسلمات رحيا منهم رموات اللهم وفق المسلمين في مشارق الأرض ومغاربها اللهم بارك في أولادنا وفي ذرياتنا وفي أزواجنا يا الله اللهم أمن بيوتنا يا الله اللهم أمن بيوتنا من الشر ومن الفساد ومن الفتنة ومن الغصب ومن السرقة اللهم أمن المسلمين في أوطانهم وفي غير أوطانهم اللهم وقنا على التقوى اللهم بارك في هذا المكان وفي هذا المصلى والقائمين عليه اللهم جعل في قلوب المسلمين الكرم والسخاء اللهم جعلنا منفقين في سبيلك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم طهر قلوبنا وألسنتنا يا الله اللهم ألف بين قلوبنا يا الله اللهم وحد صفوف المسلمين يا الله لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك اللهم اجعل آخر ما نقول من هذه الدار أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك لك وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك يا الله اجعل هذا في قلوبنا يا الله اجعل هذا في قلوبنا يا الله الشهادة الشهادة يا الله يا الله اجعل هذا في قلوبنا يا الله اللهم اجعل آخر ما نقول من هذه الدار واحسن خاتمتنا يا الله بلا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله اللهم اجعلنا في دائرة هذه الشهادة اللهم اجعلنا في دائرة وفي حسن حصينها يا الله اللهم اجعلنا في أمنها يوم القيامة اللهم اجعل النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم مقبلا علينا مستبشرا بنا يا الله متبشبشا يا الله اللهم اجعله مبتسما حينما يرانا آخر بأيدينا اللهم نجينا من الصراط اللهم نجينا من الصراط اللهم ادخلنا في الجنة اللهم لا تجعل يا الله هذا الذي فاتنا من رمضان لا تجعله آخر ما نتمتع من رمضان يا الله اللهم اجعل شوالنا كرمضاننا اللهم اجعل شوالنا كرمضاننا واجعل تلقعد وذا الحجة وبقي الشهور يا الله بهذا الإيمان لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فأقيم صلاة لذكره